Want to welcome everyone on back into the Just Start the Conversation podcast. My name is Kevin Crockett, along with hosts Jody McLeod Mismer and Amy Allenson Dundon. Uh, it's brought to you by St. Luke's University Health Network. And I think it's very fascinating that even as we're just getting into episode two, ladies, um, we talk about just starting the conversation is really what this whole thing's all about. And uh, we turn to a familiar face in Philadelphia. If you are a local sports fan, um, a guy who's brought home the only Super Bowl in Philadelphia Eagles history came out a few weeks ago and said that there was a conversation he just wanted to start. So I'm going to start by reading you guys this quote, and then we can go on from there. It was Lane Johnson who said, I would like to thank everyone for their understanding and support over the last two weeks. I appreciate the positive notes and messages as I've worked hard to restore my personal life. Depression and anxiety are things I've dealt with for a long time and have kept hidden from my friends and family. If you're reading this and struggling, please know that you are not alone. So uh, ladies, as we get into episode two of this Just Start the Conversation podcast, first of all, great to talk to you both again. Um, jump in. Uh, Amy, I'll start with you. You saw this quote, uh, a big name here in Philadelphia is Lane Johnson. What kind of were your thoughts as you saw this all come together? I had a lot of thoughts, Crockett. Good morning to you. It's good to be back. Good morning, Jody. Good morning. Um, I, I am um, a Philadelphia Eagles fan since birth, right? And go birds. Uh, and go birds. <laughs> and we won't talk about yesterday, but go birds. <laughs> um, we, you know, one of the things that um, we know is that elite athletes um, are not you know, are, are not separate from or immune to um, mental health uh, issues. And, and we'll get into that probably more deeply in an episode to come. But I think Lane's quote, it made me happy for him, not because he has depression and anxiety, but but happy for him that he was able to take time out for himself and take a couple weeks off and and share his story and speak his truth. and And bring it out in the open with his coaches and his friends and his family and say, I am struggling and I'm struggling with depression and anxiety. And I have been for a long time and I want to talk about it. And it, he is one of many, 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 and I'm just glad that he brought it up. Yeah. You wonder almost what led up to the public exposure of it. And, and you, you look at someone who's very successful, obviously, um, and you do wonder what occurred or what brought it to the forefront, what happened that built it up to the point where, okay, I need to come public with it. You know, right. was there something happening that people were going to pick up on? And, I, you know, I'm just curious on that. Well, and I don't know that we'll ever know. That's, that's certainly Lane's business. But what I do think it speaks to is how all of us are um, super susceptible to what we were talking about last week, um, which is cumulative stress, right? Um, and Lane's um, disclosure really is probably, you know, the pinnacle of his own personal cumulative stress, whatever that looks like for Lane. It looks different for all of us. But I think what we have to remember is that um, if we get stuck in a dark place um, and we don't we don't pull our way out of it and we don't really deal with it, then another dark place comes along sure. and another dark place comes along. And before you know it, you, whoever you are, you're like, I need a break. I can't, I can't do this anymore. You think, you know, here's what's interesting too, is that I mentioned he's successful. The fact that he's successful, people probably assume that there's nothing wrong. And so you oh. look at someone, you look at someone, they're successful, everything looks, it's going well, you know, you, you have money to spend, you have success in the spotlight, success in, or success in your career. Who would have ever guessed? Right. Who would have ever known? Well, yeah, exactly. And, and that's the stigma right. too, right? right? Is we don't, we don't talk about, um, it, it's not uh, going back to elite athletes, right? It's, it's not cool for a big, strong, tough guy to say, I'm sad mm -hmm. and I can't get out of bed or I am having panic attacks and I, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not at the top of my game. And I, and I think probably, I, I, I don't know Lane, I can't speak for Lane, but whenever athletes take any sort of time out for injury, it's assumed it's physical. Mm -hmm. And sure. my guess sure. is that because there was no physical injury report, 
um, mm -hmm. he felt the need to come out and give and give his reason. And I would argue, and I'm sure you would too, that he's actually a stronger individual for this. Mm, like this yeah. is this is sure. this is as strong as strong as you can be. Oh, is, yeah. is taking a whole piece. I it was so Amy sent out the quote ahead of time. Mm. Homework Crockett did it, <laughs> um, and so it. I, I am. Uh, I came across Dansby Swanson, who is an Atlanta Brave. So not a local sports hero. I'm I'm also not a Braves fan, but I'm a huge I've now become a huge Dansby Swanson fan who really publicly took on anxiety and his own anxiety and has created um, a not for profit or a nonprofit way that individuals can work through their anxiety and then it led me down a rabbit hole of like <laughs> all of these athletes and musicians and it's amazing it is amazing and you know one of the things as i was doing homework crockett um one of the things that i was reading about was was the um high incidence of post-traumatic stress disorder in elite in elite athletes and i and as a psychotherapist and someone who's done a lot of work with elite athletes myself in practice um I, I wasn't necessarily connected to the idea of PTSD in elite athletes. And as I did some more digging, what I found was, you know, elite athletes are generally people who, from the time that they can start performing their sport, are 24 7, that's their identity. And that's what they work towards. And if they have an injury or if they witness a, um, a gruesome injury to another player on the field, um, or if they are exposed to coaching that is um, harsh or sure. very strict and and very kind of um, that where there's no room for kind of de-stress and breakdown and they're constantly, constantly, constantly moving towards perfection. And if it's not perfection, perfection, you redo it, right? So there is an element of um, of post-traumatic or traumatic stress that builds up in elite athletes. But I, I'm also, you know, thinking we can generalize that to athletes at the high school level, athletes at the college level, um, and parents of athletes, right? It, it just trickles everywhere. So I think this quote's important. So I have a question though, because you mentioned cumulative stress, stress PTSD. So help me understand PTSD, is it, one event or is it the cumulative events that occur of, of stressful times? Because I think, yeah, I think some people probably think of PTSD as war, mm -hmm. right. Or, or ongoing abuse right. or something like that. So is there a differentiation in cumulative stress that leads to PTSD or an event that leads to something? Is there a differentiation there? Well, the differentiation is that post-traumatic stress disorder to to diagnose somebody um, with that, they they have to be experiencing it for months after an event. Okay, and it, it's more prolonged, um, and certainly lots of stressors, life stressors that build up, can certainly can certainly lead to something like post-traumatic stress disorder. Now. It's it's honestly fairly rare to have a, a PTSD. It's usually more chronic stress or stress related to, you know, a, a chronic event. Mm -hmm. um, so we do think about war, but but we have to also remember that the flashbacks, the intrusive nightmares, the depression, the um, thoughts of self harm, the wanting to isolate, all of that stuff. Um, has to be present for a certain length of time and, and prolonged after an, a traumatic incident to be diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. However, as Lane's quote kind of really lends itself to, I think we need to remember that uh, we the stress of of per, the per, stress of trying to perform, I guess, and we all try to perform whether it's in our job, whether it's in uh, you know our workout routine, whether it's in our family, in our marriage, in mm -hmm. school, in college, that constant strive to be at the top of your game is really, really stressful. And that builds up if we don't have any outlets. 
So success in and of itself lends itself to lots of stress. Gotcha. Sure. Yeah. I mean, look at the situation with Simone Biles. I mean, you could argue Simone Biles is the best athlete in the world, not mm. gymnast, not Olympic, the best athlete in the world and said, hey, I got to take some time away. And it was something that right away gymnasts came out and said, we get it. And athletes came out and said, we get it. I think something that's really happened in the last few years is this. You know, you, you mentioned that that Lane Johnson's a big, bad dude. If you saw him on a football field for a guy like him to come out and say, this is what I'm experiencing. And for enough people to embrace it and understand and say, yes, I, I can understand what you're going through. My first experience with therapy had to do with a teammate of mine getting a pretty serious injury. And I sat down with a group of some of my teammates and we talked and we cried and we didn't understand. But one thing that we did know was that what we were going through in that moment was we understood each other. And I feel like whatever's transpired in the last years, the last few years with mental health, particularly with athletes and their reach and their ability to connect with people, um, the, the mental awareness just of people has come so far and it's been a beautiful thing and shout out to a guy like Lane Johnson for saying, yeah. look, I'm just like everybody else, whether my, my paycheck is bigger, my profile is bigger, whatever it is, um, whatever he has in his heart, there's a good chance somebody working a regular nine to five job could be feeling the exact same thing. And it's so important that people with these profiles come out and say, Hey, this is happening with me. There's a chance it's happening with you. Hopefully we can just quite honestly, just start a conversation yeah. about it. Yeah. And I think it's interesting too, because it's, you brought up Simone Biles. And I, I think the one thing that for those of us who work in psychiatry, I might go a little controversial here, but um, she was advocating for her health. She, she was mm -hmm. advocating for her safety. She was very clear on that. If I can't concentrate, I'm at risk. And you watched the media spin it in almost a victim kind of way, like, oh, poor Simone. Mm -hmm. oh, and I thought, oh, my gosh, stop it. She's she's actually coming out and saying, hey, I'm not safe right now mm -hmm. be because when I'm doing flips in the air, right. it's probably not good to yeah. be distracted. And I just thought, gosh, she's not a victim. She, right. That's very powerful. This yeah. is an incredibly powerful athlete who said, I need to step back for a minute. She stepped back and then came back in, and I think she got a silver. You know, when she something amazing, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, something you know, amazing. I think yeah. you make a, you raise a really good point. I think Simone um, was probably not the exception. I think she's probably more the rule. I, I would agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, if we take a look back in the history, especially of elite gymnasts and all of the stress and mental health issues that they've been through. Um, because of some of the the things that have come out and and, and been confirmed with sexual abuse mm -hmm. and and sure. things that that um, women and men in that sport have have hid for a long time as well, um, it's certainly understandable for them to say, you know, I have to take a step back and take care of me. And again, I go back to, you know, most of pe most people who are super successful in their lives at whatever they do have been concentrating on it, focusing on it, learning about it, doing it over and over and mm -hmm. over and over since they're five. Right. You know, and, and look at our doctors, right? Smart kids to begin with, pushing themselves academically in school, maybe sacrificing not playing a sport because they sure. sometimes, yes, but sometimes making sacrifices that were difficult. Um, to have their ac academics high and then pushing themselves to be top tier in college and top tier in med school and top tier in, you know, in trying to get residencies and, and then getting to a place to practice their craft and, you know, still now have not being at the top of their game. Well, right, because now you, okay, I'm, I've achieved this. I'm a doctor. Uh, I'm not a doctor but they're a doctor, <laughs> but she plays one on TV. Yes. It's important to know. And with that attitude, you never will be. <laughs> yes. I will never be. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but they're a doctor, but then they're constantly gaining more education and, and getting continuing ed. And I had a conversation with one of our physicians um, not too long ago about, you know, new interventions that are coming on track. You know, this is, and he completely dove into it and to become even better. And, and you're right, 
it's this practice and this rote way that individuals who are successful approach their life. But you brought it up. They also have other daily stressors and exceptional stressors mm -hmm. like the, you know, the sexual abuse that occurred within the U.S. gymnasts, mm -hmm. um, you know, the association. And yeah, it's just important to step back and, and, and take that pause and not be judged because yeah. of it and actually be seen as it being a strength, not as a, as a weakness right. or, you know, oh, just, just push through and get it done. So, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that the other thing that we, that kind of goes along with this conversation we're having is remembering that the helpers, right? Um, and and when I say the helpers, I always tell kiddos that I'm working with when they're going through a traumatic time or something bad happens, look for the helpers, right? They're in every picture. They're in every news story. We're probably not talking about them, but look mm -hmm. for the helpers because those are the ones that are going to guide you, right? And we have to remember that through forget COVID, I mean, we not don't forget it, but let's set it aside and put it with everything else. And all of the helpers are listening to and fixing traumatic, stressful, physical and emotional events 24 seven. So we call that, now I'm gonna add another term to you, we call that secondary trauma. So- I don't want that either. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing down things I don't want, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it, no, it all goes well, yeah. with this, right? So we've got the cumulative stress, we've got ang generalized anxiety disorder, we've got depression, and now we've got all the helpers who are um, absorbing mm -hmm. everybody else's stuff and holding that on top of their own stuff, and that's secondary trauma. So it's it's the shock absorbers that get right. that. And it's, it's usually the people we don't talk a lot about is, you know, psychotherapists, um, you know, psychiatrists, people that are listening all day long to sure. trauma stories. Well, I think of that with firefighters. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, they're expected to run into the fire mm -hmm. where all the rest of us for self-preservation are going in the opposite direction. You have individuals like police officers, like firefighters, like EMTs yeah. who are rushing to scenes. Yeah. But I have a question, though, it kind of just to go back to our, our cumulative stress mm -hmm. perspective. So that's their job, right? Their job is to accumulate stress every day. Yep. How do how do I avoid if I'm accumulating stress? Not that I'm necessarily being impacted by cumulative stress. Mm -hmm. I understand those maybe two different right. things. What do I do is I accumulate stress to take a little bit out of that cup every day yeah. or every week so that it doesn't get to the point where now I'm PTSD, right. now I have PTSD or now I have to step away. Not that you shouldn't step away, right. but maybe you can't. Right. Like, you know, this guy's a football player. His right. paycheck is probably more than I'll see in Ever. a life. <laughs> right. Thanks. That was, that was deep. She Listen, we're, deep. we're in mental you're, health. You're probably right. Yes, yes. It's more than I'll ever see. He Trust had, me, I've seen his contract. It's it's more than we'll all ever see. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, on that note, um, <laughs> no, but he can walk away. There's probably a part of his but walk away. He, he can, can pause. He can, but he didn't. He played yesterday. No. So like he took a few weeks off. I didn't know that. He took a few weeks off. Sorry. I just I just hurt your finger. It's okay. Um <laughs> so he he took a few weeks off, but yesterday he came back. And right after he made that statement, he came back and said, I'm coming back out there. Right, right. But I guess my thing is he, there may be professions that permit you to take a couple weeks off and there may be professions that do not, you, that you can't do that. Right. There's not money in the bank or a contract that says I get to keep my job. So what do we say to people like the firefighter, like the police officer, like the psychotherapist, so, what do we say to them? Because they can't take a couple weeks off. Right. So thank goodness that first responders, psychiatrists, psychotherapists get really good training in grad school on how to create boundaries. So one of the things that helps us to not um, absorb it all and keep it all is uh, the ability to be empathetic, um, but not necessarily... Uh, get ourselves immersed in a situation that will cause us harm. So you're not taking it home? 90% um, of the time, no. Okay. 
you know, and, and first responders, firefighters, um, ER workers, they're taught that too, right? How to distance themselves from, from getting way too involved at the same time. Um, first responders, doctors, nurses, we, we love what we do and we're here to help and we're heal, here to heal. And I think one of the things that we do well and that we, we need to make sure we keep doing is talking to our colleagues in, the, the, in any profession you're in and saying, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Do you need a break? Do you need help? How can I help you? Um, you know, that was a really difficult case. Let's but, talk about it. But I, and I don't mean to push, but okay, so you take 10% home. It's 90% of the time you don't take it home. Mm -hmm. That means if you've been doing this for 20 years, right? you've accumulated 10% of every event and you can't take so, time off. Right. So when we take it home, and this is what I would hope anybody listening would figure out a way to do is, is how do I de-stress? How do I get rid of that? You know, how do I dust it off my shoulders and move on? Do I keep it? Do I journal about it? Uh, maybe. Do I exercise? Do I cook? Do I crochet? What do I do? That's my coping skill, mm -hmm. right? I, as long as I have an outlet, generally, we're, you know, we're all able to balance. The world goes on very well for the most part because we can all do that. And it doesn't have to be productive. Like I think of how I de-stress, which makes my husband very nervous and I love murder podcasts and so that's, a, that's an escape uh -huh. it's just a as a husband uh, of a wife who loves murder podcasts i can feel your husband's discomfort <laughs> yeah. i keep telling him they haven't i haven't found one that got away with it yet so <laughs> everybody's safe but but i mean it doesn't have to be productive i think sometimes you know i hear you say things like crochet <laughs> cook mm. um you know exercise you know all those things those are all very productive and they take energy i think it's important for people to know too there's very passive ways mm -hmm. that you can you know de-stress absolutely that's whatever it is that works for you yeah um, it can be you know it, it can be anything as long as it's not focusing on the stuff that is stressful for you mm -hmm. now you know there's a caveat to that <clears throat> of course where i would say if the, if your if your self thoughts right if the stuff you're telling yourself is keeping you stuck in a bad place then it's important to learn how to reframe your self talk mm -hmm. um, if i'm going home and i'm ruminating about a, a story that i heard or or uh, something that i saw at work or or whatever and i and i'm carrying it then I, maybe i need to start giving myself some some i messages you know, I'm okay. And I'm going to get a good night's sleep and I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to feel better. And sometimes it's as easy as giving yourself positive affirmations, permission to restart, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and quite frankly, like for Lane and, and Simone, you know, giving yourself enough grace to take a step back and say, you know, I need some time and I don't know that I'm ready to hear or see one more trauma. Now, trauma docs can't, they got to go back in and see one more trauma. Our EMTs, our paramedics, amazing, amazing people. Amazing, you know, 100% credit to them. And, uh, you know, I and I know that they're not immune either. And sometimes it's as easy as sitting in a group and talking about it. But I think what's what's cool and through the, this conversation, you haven't mentioned and not that obviously you can get to the point where there's therapy and you're actually form formally sitting down with somebody, but we've talked about very passive things you can do, very active things you can do, self-talk that you can do. All of that is very internal and all of that is very much within your control. And I think sometimes knowing and having that information that there are things that you can do on a daily basis to help yourself mm -hmm. um, so that it doesn't build up and, and know that there's always therapy that yeah. can be accessed, but it's it's not necessarily because an event has happened or because you have reached stress that you you need or have to reach out to a professional. It sounds like there are some things that we can do that are free, that are accessible, that can help us. So at what point do I need to realize that my self-talk, my reframing, my coping mechanisms, when do I know that I've now reached a point where, okay, I need, I need help. Like I, mm -hmm. I've, I've done the affirmations. I've, taken up crocheting. I, 
I can macrame. I can, <laughs> I picked up every hobby. Prove there. it. Yeah. Prove it. <laughs> right. You know what? So, okay. When do I know it's to the point that like Elaine, like a Simone, um, like a Dansby Swanson, how do I know there's a point where I need to reach out? Well, so I maybe, think, maybe I can jump in here, ladies, because sure. um, as we're looking at the time clock here, we are pushing and maybe this is a good spot to set up our next episode, because one of the things that I wanted to come back to was the idea of outlets and balance and the guilt that maybe you feel, listen, as a dad, as a mom, as a parent, certainly as a, you even said it yourself, if you're, if you're in medical school and you've given up something that you love, that can be stressful for you. Um, finding that outlet and that balance and not only that, but dealing with possibly the potential guilt, which may make you feel more stressed about whatever it is that you're going mm -hmm. through in that moment, I think is a beautiful place to hold right here and jump into next time, because I think we can certainly have uh, a good long conversation on that. She is Jody McLeod Mismer and Amy Allenson Dundon. Ladies, I appreciate it very much. Love this conversation. As I, we've only done two, but it feels like we've been talking forever, kids. It is the <laughs> Just Start the Conversation podcast. It's brought to you by St. Luke's University Health Network. Great episode two, ladies. Can't wait for episode three. Thank you so much uh, for bringing so much expertise and knowledge to us today. Thanks, Crockett. Thank you.